right? If you have times two the mass, double the mass, you have times two the exposure, times two the number of x-rays. If you cut your mass in half, you cut the number of x-rays reaching the IR in half. Okay, so mass and intensity, mass and quantity have that direct relationship. With KVP, it's not so straightforward, right? If you want the intensity at the IR to change by a factor of two, how much does KVP change by? 15%. 15%, right? That is the 15% rule of KVP. A 15% change in KVP will change the intensity at the IR by a factor of two, right? So changing the KVP is almost equivalent to changing the mass by two, right? So small changes in KVP have big effects on the image. So, we went over this math question on Wednesday. Right? Console is set to 90 kVp. If we want to double the exposure, right? Double the number of x-rays reaching the IR. And we're doing this by changing the kVp. How can we adjust kVp to double the number of x-rays reaching the IR? I've got 100 x-rays hitting the IR. I want 200 of them to hit the IR. But I'm not changing mass right now. I'm changing KVP. Increase it by 15 percent. Mm -hmm. so it is increase. So exposure to the IR goes up when we increase the KVP. But how much do we increase the KVP by? 15 percent. 15 percent, right? 15 percent. With KVP, it's always 15 percent. 15 percent will double it. 15 percent will double the exposure to the IR. Whatever the KVP. So 15% of whatever the KVP will double the exposure to the IR. In this case, our starting KVP is what? 90. 90. 90. How do we find 15% of 90? Multiply by 0 0.15. Good, you multiply by 0.15, right? 15%, right, is the same as 0.15. So we get our 15% as 0.15, you multiply this is how much our KVP will change by. Now, the KVP can change up, the KVP can change down. Earlier, which direction did we say the KVP needs to change? Up. Up, right? We raise the KVP to raise exposure to the IR. Are we maintaining anything right now? No, right? This is not maintenance. We're not keeping anything the same. We're letting the exposure go up along with KVP. So, 90 KVP, increased by 13.5, you just add them together, and you get 104 KVP, right? You just round it up to 104, okay? Now, on the other hand, let's say our KVP is 75. We need to decrease exposure by 50%. So, what's happening to the number of x-rays at the IR? Minus 15%. Good, minus 50%. It's going down by half, right? If there were 100 x-rays before, we want there to be only 50 x-rays afterward. So, we need to change our KVP. How much do we change it by? 15%. 15%. Good. What is 15% of 75? 11.25. So how do you get 11.25? 75 by 0.15. Good. Sorry, John. 75 <laughs> times 0.15, right? This is what your calculator will give you, right? This is the amount you change by. Wait, so are you trying to tell me off of this 50%? <laughs> so the 50... You could have wrote that a different way. <laughs> so what is this 50% talking about? That's talking about how much the exposure that the iron is going to decrease by. You could have said... That's true. So <laughs> the registry can say it any number of ways. No, that's what I'm saying. Are you trying to tell me after this 50% or is, is, do you do something else with that? No, so the 50% just means half. Yes, uh, the mass is half. going down by half. Correct. Okay. So the mass is going down by half. Yes. Where did the 15% come from? 
this 15% here? Because we are changing KVP, we always change KVP by 15%. We'll always change KVP in 15% increments here with these kind of questions. Right. So here we're going from our original exposure and we're going down by a factor of two. We're going down by half, divide by two. So we're going to change our KVP by 15%. But which direction will the KVP change it, up or down? Down. Down. So this time exposure is going down, that means KVP is going down. Right. So if we're going down, right, we do 75 minus our 11. Right? I'll just round this to 11. 75 minus 11 gives you 64 KVP. So you drop your KVP down to 64, and you will only have half the number of X-rays reaching the IR. So you're what? decreasing the mass to fifty percent. So you're not. Are we changing the mass? You're not changing the mass. You just want to decrease this exposure. Correct. Yeah. But half. So then you change. Correct. Instead. So mass is not changing right now. All that's changing is exposure, the number of X-rays reaching the IR, and we're changing that by changing the KV. Yes, Jay. So, image-wise, uh -huh. this would affect it, let's say, like, um, the, the KVP was too low, so we don't really have an image on our image, right? So if we're increased, or, so was the KVP too high? So we're, we're gonna drop it 15%, and then, so what So what happened? It, was it too bright? What, like, what are we looking at? So, perhaps, your image was overexposed, and perhaps you forgot Mr. Fung told you that anytime you want to change intensity, you should change mass. Yeah. And so you're like, oh, I need to change intensity. Let me change the KVP, because you didn't pay attention during Mr. Fung's lecture. <laughs> but you paid enough attention that you remembered the 15% rule, right? So you're like, all right, 15% rule, let's go. I'm gonna show off what I remembered from Mr. Fung's class. Mm. All right, and so you're like, all right, I overexposed it. I need to drop the intensity. Right, my S value was too low, right? I'm gonna bring it back up to inside the correct range. So, to reduce intensity to the IR, I'm gonna drop my KVP. But I'm not gonna drop my KVP by 50% as well, right? That's right, too big of a change. Right? Anytime you want to change intensity by 50% down, we decrease our KVP by 15% down. So the image initially was oversaturated, you said? So yes, perhaps the image was oversaturated, but you made this change and now it looks correct. So what is confusing you? Um, like I know that you said every time you decrease the KVP, you reduce the 15% mm -hmm. Correct. But wouldn't you, you know, divide 75 So, so if every time they want to decrease it half, they just you but that equals half or does it be percent? Oh, okay, he says, okay. So, oh, so, so you would not need to do that. You already know that you're only making one 15% change because the question tells you you're going from your original down to 50%. So you know that you only have one step. You're going from your original down to 50%. Oh, you asked John. Okay. Right. I was going to ask so him the same thing. In this case, oh, we're not John. maintaining oh, okay. the exposure. We want to decrease it. So, 50% of it. So, um, we're oh, yeah, supposed to be to decrease the exposure. We're supposed yeah. to be yeah. decreasing the mass. That's but this idea. person is actually You're decreasing the so Let's just Correct. say there's 100 x rays. Uh -huh. so so what's the benefit of that over a change? Oh, hold on. Let me ask your penalty question first. Sorry. So, we're making only one step, which is our original. Cut it in half. We're down to 50%. Right. Okay. Yeah. 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 Cut it in half, we're down to 50%. Anytime you make a single step like that, you're going to be changing by 15% in the same direction. So if your exposure is going down by half, that means you're going down 15% on only the KVP. Right, so this KVP here, right, you would never use any of the numbers here for exposure on it. 
right? And the 15% here for KVP, you would never use that on any of your exposure numbers. Okay, so it's, um, it's not like the inverse square law or anything where you'll throw all these numbers together into the same equation, right? You just need to take them separately. First, just look at this. How much am I changing? I'm changing by 50% just the one time. It's like half just the one time. So I'm only going to need to use the 15% one time. I'll drop it down 15% the one time. And then you just multiply it by the KVP? So to find 15%, I need to multiply it by the KVP. So the 15% will always be multiplied by this KVP. This 15% will never be multiplied by whatever your exposure is. Okay. So what is that 50 doing there? So that 50% is just telling you how much you're changing, how many steps you're taking. Okay. We're taking one step. We're going from the normal down to half. We're not going to one fourth, we're not going to one eighth, but we're only going from normal to half. Okay. That's what the 50% tells you. Okay. And the next question you'll see why that's important. Let's see, let's see. Jay. So, I'm um, sorry, John's is first. No, no, you had a question earlier, before, right after Melanie's. So go ahead. Um, I guess I'm just looking for the situation like where this would be optimal as opposed to changing the max. So, this situation here is not going to be optimal. This situation here is just to demonstrate How the fact works. that intensity changes with KVP. Okay. We're gonna use this information here and take one extra step to make this relevant to your clinical experience. So right now, you would not normally do this in clinic. Mm -mm. But in just a moment, you will see why we need to know this. Yes, John. Uh, I don't know if somebody asked this. Is it always going to be going down by half and going up by twice? All right. Or? Great question. And that brings us to the next slide. <laughs> now, instead of going up by twice, how much are we going up by? Four times. Four times. Four times. So that's 15% of 16 and 15% of the next That's step. right. So anytime you're doing more than one step, you just use the 15% rule multiple times. You can't combine it into a single step, right? You just do 15% rule one time, 15% rule a second time, 15% rule a third time, so on and so forth until you reach what you're looking for. So, we're gonna start by using the 15% rule one time. Which direction are we going, up or down? Up. 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 So are we going 15% up or down on the KVP? Up. 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 So let's go 15% up on the KVP one time. If we do that, if we go up by 15% one time, we get 69 KVP. At 69 KVP, what happened to our exposure at the IR? It, it, it increased, increased by how much? 2x. By double, by two. Right? So we went from 60 to 69, we went up one step. So that means that our exposure went up that one step as well, from original up to double. But we're not done yet, because this isn't double, is it? This is four times. So we need to do this a second time. So we go from our double up to our four times. Right? Two times to four times. So let's take our 69 and use that as our KVP now. We have to do 15% of 69 this time. Right? Notice this is a different number, right? 15% of 69 is different from 15% of 60. So you can't just say, oh, let me add 30%. It doesn't work that way. We need to do them step by step. So we do our next 15% here, get a new number, add it to 69, and at this point here, at 79, right, we took two steps up with 15%, and then we also went up two times, two steps with our exposure. So step number one, we went from 100% to 200%, right, we went up double, and then from there we went from 200 to 400%, right, we went from two times, to four times. So if you're changing by a factor of two each time, right, two, four, eight, 16, right, you would use the 15% rule every single time. Every factor of two. Every factor of two. Okay. So anytime you go 
Um, any type of two. Mm -hmm. I don't know. So. Uh, All right, just somebody. So why are you saying double is like? It says seventy nine. It's not double. It's fifty. Mm -hmm. I, I don't understand why you keep saying double, but we're going fifteen. All right. So the idea here. Like I understand when you do the math like that, but I don't understand where double comes from. Okay. So. So I have some IRs here. Okay, over here at this original IR, I have 100 <coughs> fixed rays reaching it. Good. Now, how many fixed rays do I actually want to reach the IR? 400. Right, I want four times, right? I want four times. So I want 400 fixed rays in reality, right? So over here, I'm starting with 60 kvp, but I want to figure out how much kvp will get me 400 x-rays. So I will use my 15% rule. My 15% rule says that every time I go up 15% here, I double my intensity. I double my exposure. So he said 15% of 60 is what? Good, so we have 69 kvp. Right. So, 69 kvp gives us how many x rays? Well, Two, 200. 200. That's right. We went up. So, this, right, went to times 2. Okay, so this was. It's 15%, right? This is times two. From here, this isn't the correct number of fixed rays, right? This is not the correct number of fixed rays. How do I go from 200 to 400? 15 Multiply by two. So here, 15 times two is 400. So here, I need to do times two again, right? To get from 200 to 400, I have to do times two. So I have to do a second step. To do a second step, I do the exact same thing I did previously. What did I do previously? That's right. I just multiplied my KVP times 15% and then added the original KVP. And this should give me a 79 KVP. So here is. This is the thing that's happening in between each step, right? Start at 100, one step will give me 200 x-rays. Second step will give me times two that 400 x-rays. How do I make these steps? I have to multiply by 15% and then move up or down. So multiply by 15%, move up, right? Addition, new KVP. Multiply by 15%, move up, addition, new KVP. So that is how I'm um, using that 15% rule multiple times. Yes? So if you would have said to increase the exposure by six, you would do oh, it three yeah. times. So. Right? If, six. So how would I go from 400 to 600? Another times two. Another times two, no. right? No. No. Right? No. 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 Eight. 800. Mm. So you're doing 600 oh, so divided did, by 400. It did what? Huh? 600 divided by 400. So 600 divided by 400. So, if you try to do times two here, right? 1.5. That's right. You wouldn't get you wouldn't get six if you try to do times two here. What would you get instead? 800. That's right. This would give you 800 x-rays. So you have to do 1.5. 1.5. Right. So you would have to do 1.5, which is weird because we haven't discussed anything with 1.5. So the registry would not do that to you, <laughs> and I would not do that to you. I would keep it as nice. Single steps. I, I know, I know that, but I'm just saying, like now, practically. You said four. Yes. Exposure four times, mm -hmm. and we did it twice, so it was two four. Because mm -hmm. we go into uh, uh, we're doing factors of two, so that's right. why I'm like confused if you said six. So right. So six is not a factor of two. Yeah. That is the problem. Yeah. 
So we have to get 800? So a factor of two is just something where you can only multiply two by itself and still get the same thing. Yeah, you two. So, so 100 times two, right? You get two, times two is four, times two is eight, times two is gonna be 16, times two is gonna be 32, times two is gonna be 64. So you see we're skipping some numbers. Not all even numbers are gonna be a factor of okay. two. Alright, thank you. That's what I was trying to. Okay. Okay, let's see. Check in. Thank you. In between numbers don't exist, so we don't need to do that. So we would not do 600, we would not do 500. They don't exist, so we don't need to do that. We, yeah. You don't need to do that. But they, they exist. exist, yes. But the math for them is going to be too hard, so we're not going to do it. Uh, Jay, did you have a question? No. Okay. How did you do it? Six, uh, 600 so, divided by 400. Um, okay. Any questions as Thank to you. this concept here, right? Doing steps, right? One step, two steps, three steps. Do you have yeah. to have the worksheet? Oh, that would be yes. helpful. If you gave them the worksheet, you don't need it. Yes, I shall give you. I shall give you a worksheet for you to do over spring. Whoa, 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 whoa! Yeah. No. <laughs> give it to me. Yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah. 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 Ye
want to change exposure, right? So if I increase my KVP, my exposure normally goes up, right? That's what we just said. But I don't want that. I want my exposure to stay the same. So if I want it to stay the same, I'm trying to maintain exposure. Now I am adjusting both KVP and mass. So this is one additional step to what you just saw. Console is set to 65 KVP and two mass. Technologists adjust the mass to four. What should the new KVP be? So let's think about it. This creates some kind of exposure, right? This gives us an exposure, a normal exposure. If I increase my mass, what happens to the exposure? It's going to increase by two. Increases. Mass went up by two, so exposure goes up by two. And now we have this question here, right? We're back to what you just saw, right? The question is, well, actually, no. Yeah, that's, it's. <laughs> to, it's sorry, this question here, but... right? That's good. So, mass went up by two, exposure went up by two. I need to bring exposure back down to normal. So I need to cut the exposure in half by changing my KVP. Yes? Just so in the last concept that we were just did, the contrast would have been too low, right? So I'm not going to say it was too high or too low, but you would be changing your contrast. Mm. Okay. So in the case of this it's one it's here, you would be changing contrast because KVP is changing. So, mass goes up, exposure goes up. I want exposure to come back to the original. I need to bring exposure back down. If exposure comes down, what come, happens to KVP? KVP goes down. So for exposure, right? If I need exposure to go down, KVP has to go down. So. Yeah, this one. Right? So if we want exposure to go down, right? What happens to our KVP? Go down. Go down. Go down. Go down. So, yep. so yes, take this step by step. Right, so in this case, mass is going from two to four. So mass brought our exposure up. We need to do the opposite to bring exposure back to normal. To maintain it? Because I want a higher mass. So I want my mass to be higher, so I need to do something to KVP to keep the exposure the same. So, mass changed from two to four, the exposure increased. So we need to decrease our exposure, bring it back down to normal. Okay, so we do our 15% rule, Multiplied by our 15%. This is our KVP. Mm -hmm. How much we're changing it by? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We just yeah, subtract. Yeah. Right. Very good. Mm -hmm. So this is the actual real life situation you will use 15% rule in. Right? You're gonna be doing something and you're like, all right, I have this exposure, I have this patient. I want to change my KVP or my mass. How do I change the other factor to keep the exposure the same? Okay, for example, let's say that you are doing, let's say that you're doing ribs and your console is not giving you an exposure factor. Your console is broken. All you can do is set all your techniques manually. The computer's doing none of that for you. And you're like, oh no, I have not memorized a single technique for ribs. <laughs> I don't remember what a rib technique's supposed to be. I remember chest, right? I did enough chest to memorize that, but I have no, it's like only the third time I've seen ribs in my entire life, and two of them when, was when I was a student, right? So I don't know what techniques I'm supposed to use. But I do know chest, right? So I'm like, okay, I know chest. Chest is supposed to be like 110 KVP, two mass. And I know for ribs, ribs should be lower KVP because I want higher contrast. 
So I need to drop the KVP on these ribs to get the image I want. But if I'm dropping my KVP, I need to increase, increase, increase I need to increase my mass, right? Otherwise, my image is going to look white. I'm not going to have enough exposure. It's going to be underexposed, right? So how on earth do I set up this technique for ribs? So are we talking about what about a piece of paper and like work out? <laughs> <laughs> So, we need to multiply by what? 15 point Good. And then add or subtract? Subtract. Subtract. Good. So, what happens when we do this? You get 93.5. You do our 110. And 0.15. 16.5. Okay. 110 minus 15.5. That's right. 93.5. Yes. I've got the rest of it. You got the rest of it? All right, good. Then double check your answers as we go along. <laughs> or double check my answers. All right. So. No, he said what he said. Right? I, I dropped my KVP. Right. When I dropped my KVP, mm -hmm. what happened to my exposure? The number of x rays? It went down by how much? 50%. That's right. Half. So now I have 50 x rays. Yeah. So, uh, oh no, that is not what I want, is it? No. no. So, how do I raise the number of x rays back to 2? Or back to 100? Times 2. Good. Times 2. Times 2. Oh, wait. Times 2. So we get 4 mass. Times 2. Times two. Times two. Times two. Times two. And if we do that, now, right, this here. Man, forget these ribs. We schedule. Go to a different clinic. Go to a different clinic. Hey, did that patient was uncooperative? Patient refused. Right, so we changed our KVP. Right. We reduced the number of face rays we the IR. Yes. So we raised our mass. Yes. And we increased the number of face rays between the IR. And so now we Back to normal. We're maintaining our intensity. Yes, right. Okay. So that you do the one, you have to do the opposite to the other. Correct. Yeah. There we go. So. Did you say that? Yes. Yes. No. So inverse relationships. Yes. Okay. However, 94 <laughs> kvp, right? Not, not. We are not yet in this 70 to 80 kvp range. So, gotta do this again, don't we? Is it registry going to make us do that? Like go back and forth? Yes. So, I can't promise one way or the other, but this is useful for them. This is useful for them. Yeah. <laughs> so, what's the KVP? Once again, let's drop this down, right? He's going to ask you to put a piece of paper and do it. Your, your tech response will be okay, so assume that we start with. <laughs> Uh, uh, <laughs> 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 I'm like, this the patient's on the table. <laughs> All right, so let's go ahead and try this out. What do we do when we reduce this by 15 percent? Subtract. Subtract. What do we get? 79.475. All right. Is it uh, Let's round it. Let's round it. 80. 80. You don't trust him? <laughs> wow, he doesn't trust you. Alright, so 79.9. Good. <laughs> so now we have to do the same thing. Alright, so 79.9. Good. That gives us 80 KVP here. That's the range, we're done. Not done quite. He's like, that's not all. So we do this at 6 miles? Yep. So about 79. Alright, 79. Mr. Fox. Alright, so. What happened to the number of x-rays? 20 divided by 2. Right, divided by 2, right? So, how do we get these x-rays back? Times 2. Times 2. Times 2, again. So, how much mass is this? 8. So, right, and so when you do that, Right, so, if we're just, right? That's 
right? We're just doing, right? We're just reversing every change we made, right? You made a change here. You did something to the number of X-rays. You reverse it using the mass. You made a change here. You did something to the exposure. You reversed it using the mass, right? So, yes, Jay. Um, so, is the number accurately 25, or would it be 50 again? So, if you take, if you divide it by two twice, right? If you went just straight down to 80 kbp, you would have only 25 x-rays. So, if we go straight down, right? So we went 115% down, 215% down, so this is how many x-rays we have. So we need to go one double, map, one step of mass up, two steps of mass up to counter that. So it's the 800. So, so, have, 80. Have, mm -hmm. Go ahead. so how does the mass calculation come to 100? So, so you're losing x rays here, you're gaining x rays here, it stays the same. You lose x rays here, you gain x rays here, it stays the same. We didn't really have to see the calculation. So, the key here is that when you change KVP, Exposure is changing in one direction. So to counter that, your mass needs to change in the opposite direction. So as KVP goes down, exposure is going down, so mass has to go up. If KVP is going up, exposure is going up, so mass has to go down. Right? So mass is always going to be inverse to your KVP and exposure, if that is what you are changing. Does that make sense? So in the opposite way, um, when we're doing down, then the mass, how would we subtract? Okay, so if KVP is going down, what happens to exposure? Exposure goes down as well. Okay, so then what happens? What should happen to mass? Mass should go down as well. Mm -hmm. Mass should increase. Mass should increase, right? We just said mass should be doing the opposite of KVP. And if KVP is going down, or sorry, if KVP is going up, what happens to exposure? Exposure is going up. Exposure is going up. So if we need to bring exposure back to normal, what has to happen to mass? Mass has to reduce. Mass has to reduce. So, yes, Jay. So then, um, I apologize if you already said this. The top row mm -hmm. is only if you change KVP mm -hmm. without touching mass. Mm -hmm. Correct. Could we change KVP and mass at the same time and still end up at the same answer? I mean, so like if you're not treating the patient until you reach right, the end. Right, I'm not saying. I'm so not saying like, yeah, you okay, can change them separately. Just like doing the math behind the floor or behind the wall, or whatever. Uh, you do the 15 percent, and then you go with mass. Now your number is back at 100. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So okay. so yes, right. You can go stepwise like this. Right, da, 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 da. Yeah. Right, I'm going to go da, 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 and then da, da. What? Right? Just make sure you're using the same number of steps each time. Okay. Right? You can't use 15% rule three times with KVP, but only two times with mass. Mm -hmm. Right? Because then you wouldn't have maintained the density. Okay. Yes, she needs to maintain the X-ray and the um, mass, then you have you're changing from the stage one to the, from 100 to 80. Uh, I'm not sure about the so, the what is 90 to 80. So and what are you asking about? So like, we know that we want that much mass, so we know that how, for this thing, we have to increase the change this much and uh, make the mass this much. That's how they have a control change. So you know you want to keep intensity the same. That's why we are maintaining intensity. So we're going to keep the intensity the same, but we're changing KVP, we are changing mass, and they're always going to go in opposite directions. Right? Remember, when you maintain something, those two things that you're messing with will always go in opposite directions. Right? If you're maintaining mass and you're trying to change MA and time, they have to go in opposite directions to balance out. If you're maintaining intensity and you're changing KVP and mass, 
they have to go in opposite directions to balance out. Right? Yeah. Right. Question mark? Oh, question, Mr. Fine. Yes. So on that last one we did, mm -hmm. um, so it, like you said, in order to maintain it, mm -hmm. we increased it by two, mm -hmm. and then we turned around and we decreased it by two. Mm -hmm. I'm lost on that because we increasing it too and we decreasing it. So mm -hmm. that's right. So KVP is doing the increase, mass is doing the decrease, or vice versa. Right? Doesn't matter which one's doing which, but the idea is that you can change both of these values, but end up with the same intensity at the end. So why do we decrease it in the end to get 55? For the this question, right? This is what I'm, mm -hmm. I'm lost on, right? How do we end up decreasing? Mm -hmm. So mass there went up, right? It went from two to four. Right. So KVP had to go down to balance out the change in exposure. So that's why we decrease. That's why oh, we decrease. Oh, okay, gotcha, gotcha. It's all about balancing things out. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. All right. Over here, console is set to one twenty KVP eight max. We approach this kind of question. You have to see how many times you brought the KVP down and then apply that to the map. Good. So let's figure out how many steps we have to take and then figure out how many times we need to change our map. So, what is 15% of 120? 8. How much is it? 18. 18. 18. 18, yes, very good. So 50% of 120 is 18. So if we take one step, we come down to 102 KVP. Are we done? No. No. So let's try a second step. 102 times 15%. Okay, we subtract 87 KVP. Are we done? Yes. Yes. So we took two steps with our KVP, right? Yes. We had to lower the KVP twice. Yes. Good. Exposure went down by four. Yes. Which means we need to do something to raise that exposure back up yes. by four to counter the change caused by the KVP. Mm -hmm. And what factor are we changing to counter Mass. KVP? Mass. Mass. Mass, right? It's asking what the new mass should be. The most So. That's right, so we went down by four, so we go back up by four. Original mass is what? Eight. Eight, and you go up by four, so what do we do? Times two. Eight times four, and we get 32. Woo! Very good. Mass, we can do it at the same time. Yes. So when you're doing that, you can find the exposure. It's not percentage. Since you're waiting now by four, you have to always multiply. I was waiting, sorry. Um, I'm sorry, say that one more time. Like, you know, the exposure went down mm -hmm. by four. Mm -hmm. So does that mean that you always multiply the number that they gave you up here? Like, for example, mm -hmm. eight is the mass you always multiply by whatever it went down by? Yes. Okay. Whatever it went down by, it has to go up by. So you just take that number, multiply by your mass. Mm -hmm. Very good. Okay, so. This chapter is gonna have a lot of these styles of questions. We're gonna be doing a lot of maintenance things in this chapter. Maintain mass, maintain intensity, okay? So, just to get you guys prepared. Now, let's move away from math and talk a little bit more about KVP. Once we finish KVP. So, remember, what else does KVP affect? Transmission. Penetrating. Good. A lot of things. A lot of things. Scattered. Great. So KVP, right, affects, it's about your quality, right, the energy of your X-ray beam. So if your X-ray beam is higher energy, it's able to pass through things easier, right? So higher KVP means more transmission, less absorption, right? At the same time, when you increase the energy of that X-ray beam, it becomes more likely that you produce scatter 
inside the patient's body. And then because we have scattered, we have fogging, that will decrease the contrast of your image. Okay, so increasing KVP will increase transmission, increase scatter, decrease absorption, and decrease your contrast. Over here, high KVP image, right? Take a look at this, right? Take a look at this little squiggle. Compared to this little squiggle, what's the difference? Short and long wave. The frequency, the wavelength, very good, right? Start bringing in Ms. Bonilla's class, right? Talk about those wavelength physics. So yes, right? Long wavelengths, low frequency, low energy, right? Low KVP. High frequency, short wavelengths, high energy, high KVP, right? So if you look at the high KVP image, right, and you look at how that looks compared to your low KVP image, right, more grays, more black and white, right? Higher contrast at low KVP, lower contrast at high KVP. Okay, so KVP is affecting your contrast. Also, we just look at how many x-rays pass through the tissue, right? Less x-rays get through here at low KVPs, more x-rays get through at higher KVPs, right? Higher KVP, more transmission, more x-rays getting through. So does KVP increase dose? Um, that is actually a really good question. So what is responsible for dose? Okay, so sorry, I phrased that very poorly. Let me try again. We talked about two types of, or sorry, we talked about five types of interactions that can happen in the body. Okay, but we said that really only two of them are common in diagnostics. Right, so what are the two X-ray interactions in the body? Photoelectric absorption and what else? Compton scattering. So between photoelectric absorption and Compton scattering, we said one is responsible for patient dose, one is responsible for our dose, occupational dose. Which one is occupational dose? Compton. Compton scatter. Which one is patient dose? That's right. So right. quantity, the number of X-rays goes up. Yeah. But the quality, the power of the X-rays, energy, also goes up. So KVP affects both of them. And now that we're done with KVP? We are not done with KVP. Some things that can affect how the image looks. Right? They'll either affect the quantity of X-rays, they'll affect the quality of X-rays, they'll affect both, potentially. And these things can also affect things like sharpness, right? spatial resolution, magnification, Elongation and foreshortening. Okay, so these can affect how the image looks. Okay, so number one, focal spot size. When we talk about the focal spot, what are we talking about? Where are we looking for focal spot? Probably at the target, sir. Good, at the target, focal spot of the target. Where is the target located? Anode. Anode, Anode side of the tube. Very good. So, in here, right, our focal spot, we're talking about the tube all the way up here at the target. And we said focal spot can come in two sizes, small and large, mm -hmm. typically, right? Our dual focus tube. How do we change the size of our focal spot? The console. Okay, so there's a control to console, but what does that control to console actually do? What is it that actually chooses the focal spot size? What determines it? The size, the body mass, no? Well, no. that's why we would, that could be why we would choose one over the other. Mm -hmm. But how do we create a small focal spot versus reduces a large the, focal spot? Reduce, concentrates the beam size? Okay, so something built into the tube, right. What is it built into the tube that controls which focal spot size you get? The filament. You have two filaments inside your tube, right? You have a small filament, you have a large filament. Depending on which filament you are energizing, that is going to be your focal spot size. Small filament gives you small focal spot, large filament gives you large focal spot. Okay? So it's all about that filament inside the tube. You've got at least two of them, 
and they are what determines local supply size. Okay. Now, the reason focal spot is important is because it determines the sharpness of your image. So when we talk about sharpness, right? for example, if we say an image is sharp versus unsharp, what would you, at least for me, right? My example, and this only works for maybe about half the class is, you take your glasses and you're like, ah, I'm sharp. Oh. Sharp. I'm sharp. I'm sharp. I'm sharp. Oh, well, why? Right because sharp. things look blurry when I take off my glasses, right? They become unsharp. Yeah. So sharpness versus blurriness. Mm -hmm. And so sharp versus blurry, in the case of fixed ray, right, we're looking at the edges of structures. Do we have a nice clear outline or is the outline fuzzy? Right? So sharp versus blurry. If we look over here, right? So I've got my focal spot, bigger, smaller. I have an object. Okay? The way that x-rays spread as they come through this object, right? The x-rays that are used to show the edge of my object here, on a big focal spot, they spread out more. So the edge of my object gets smeared over this larger area. Over here, the x-ray spread out less with a smaller focal spot. So the edge of my object ends up looking less smeared, less blurry. So small focal spots give you more sharpness. Right? This area here is thinner. Over here, the edge of my object looks thicker, so it looks more blurry, it's spread out over a larger area. Sharp versus blurry. Small focal spot versus large focal spot. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's a great question. So smaller looks better. Why would we not just use small all the time then? So smaller focal spot sizes we can really only use with lower MA, lower mass. Why are we restricted to lower mass on these small focal spots? Why do we have this restriction for small and not for large? Because bigger mass might be bigger. Go ahead. The heat, so, is, the heat is more concentrated. The heat is more concentrated if you're looking at a smaller area. Right, so your heat focused on just a tiny area versus heat spread across a larger area. It's a lot easier to melt something when it's nice and focused, right? If you spread it out, not gonna be as dangerous. Kind of like, you know, like how kids try and use the magnifying like glass, glass to like burn the ants? Yes. But you gotta yeah. focus that light if you want to burn the ants. But, but, if it's spread out, it's not gonna do anything. Burn the end, get, like a fire set. Or light a fire, right? You're like the yeah. So you burn the ants? No, I didn't. <laughs> I never found a man with playing glass with us. <laughs> so, it is about heating, right? <laughs> concentrated heating. Small focal spots will have more concentrated heating, more likely to burn the target and cause tube damage. Still can raise the question, okay, then why are they small with them? Why are they all just <laughs> <laughs> like, the reason, so right? I mean, if they're doing yeah. something like hands or fingers, right? Small anatomy, thin anatomy. Well, we want things to look sharp here, right? We want to see the nice, clean outlines of the bones, right? right. And you don't use a lot of mass to demonstrate a hand oh. or a finger. Okay. So you can afford to use a smaller focal spot. The heating isn't gonna be, that's right, it's not gonna be as much. But if you're doing an abdomen, right? Oh man, you're gonna burn out that tube if you try to use a small focal spot. And besides, the organs in the abdomen, right, you don't need them super sharp because they're already so big. So we can afford to use a bigger focal spot size, have the edges a little bit blurrier, but that's okay. At least it reduces our heating and lets us get the image that we need. Right? And that's also why you can't have a setting like 1000 kbp and 1000 mass. The tube will let you, right, because if you try that, you're going to burn out your tube. So yes. Too bad. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. So the small filament, 
gives you a small focal spot. If you have a small focal spot, you cannot use a high mass. Correct. So if you're doing a chest, um, chest is usually going to be maybe like two, three mass. So small focal spot size should be okay. Abdomen, pelvis, right? 40 mass. Definitely want to use a larger focal spot. Does that automatically change? So yes, usually the machine will be automatically programmed to select the proper focal spot. There's some machines with the button. Mm -hmm. The machines still have the button as well. Yes. Excuse me, sir. So what do you say? The mass is large and the focal spot is small. What happens? You're going to burn out the tube. Too much heat. Too much or the tube will not be, it will not be enough for that mass to get the small. No, so you're going to have a small focal spot and you're going to have all the heat in the small area. All the heat from all the mass is going to be in the small area and you're going to burn your tube. You're going to burn the target. Okay. Now, in reality, filament size is not the only thing that affects focal spot size. Filament size is the only thing that you can control that affects focal spot size. The second thing that affects focal spot size is that angle of the anode. Line focus principle, actual focal spot size, effective focal spot size. So the angle of your anode will affect your focal spot size, and because it affects focal spot size, it also affects your sharpness, it also affects your heating. Okay, so if you have a big angle like this, you will have a bigger focal spot, right? Big focal spot. And what did we say about big focal spots? Sharp. More heat, but Smear. unsharp. Very good. So notice right here, you see the edge of the anatomy spread out, right? We have that unsharpness. Okay, small angle means small focal spot. What did we say about small focal spots? Sharpness. More sharp, but less, less can accept less heat. Oh, this is okay. Right? You can't. So if you look at the amount of unsharpness here, the amount of blur. Notice how it's so much thinner compared to this, mm -hmm. right? So the edges are going to be a lot sharper. They're going to be a lot more clear with that small focal spot size due to the small angle on the anode. But the trade-off, once again, is that it can't accept as much heating. Now, can you change the angle of the anode? No. It's just built that <laughs> way. That is what you get. So when the department is buying an x-ray tube, they need to take into consideration what kind of exams do we think we're going to be doing with this x-ray tube. Do we need a smaller angle or a bigger angle? Right? Normally, we would probably have something. Actually, I guess I'll ask you guys. Do you still remember the approximate most common angle for an angle? 12. 12 degrees. Very good. So, most common anode angle is going to be 12 degrees, but you have a range, right? So depending on your angle, angle, right, that can affect the sharpness of the image, that can affect how much heating the tube will take. Mr. Fung, yes. Is that why you have two sizes of the sharpness? And my, I was wondering why one side is very, very sharper than the other side. Is that because the heating? Are you asking about this and this? Yes, this, this, that is bigger than this and that. Even on this side, that is... Yes, so the angle yeah. does also play a role in that. So the side on the anode side is going to be a bit sharper. The side on the cathode side is going to be a little bit more blurry. Right. So actually, that is a great observation from Shaheen. And this is something that I have seen in the practice exams. Okay, so definitely pay attention to this. Right. We've talked about anode heel effect, right? Fewer x-rays on the anode side more x-rays on the cathode side. Mm -hmm. However, that's not the only thing that anode angle causes. If you look at the amount of unsharpness, right, the clarity of the image, right, you notice that over here on the anode side, it's thinner, which means it's more sharp on the anode side. On the cathode side, it's wider, so it's actually more blurry on the cathode side. So 
So you do have that very slight difference as well in terms of anode versus cathode. Okay, so anode, fewer x-rays, sharper, cathode side, more x-rays, more blurry. Right? And you can kind of see that in the illustration here. Yes, Jay. So with that in mind, would you shoot a hand with um, the anode side or the cathode side? Um, honestly, the difference is so small that it probably won't make that much of a difference. If you were going to decide which side to put on anode versus cathode, I would make anode heel effect, right, the quantity of x-rays, your primary deciding factor. Mr. Khan, did you say it was uh, angled more on the cathode side or, mm -hmm. or what did you do? So on the cathode side, you notice that it's a bit lighter. Uh -huh. So it's mm -hmm. less sharp, more blurry. Okay. Over here on the anode side, it's thinner, <coughs> so it's more sharp, more clear, okay. less blurry. Right, ah, we've got an old friend here. <laughs> oh. Oh, I mean, yeah, since it's an old friend, we don't need to spend too much time, right? Just kind of greet them real quick, say hi, and then move on. Thank you. So, <laughs> SID, right? We talked about SID in two in terms of two concepts. One was inverse square law. We said as distance increases, intensity decreases. Right? So as we get farther away from the tube, the amount of x-rays reaching us goes down. And not just goes down by the same amount, but by distance squared. So increasing distance is one of the best ways to reduce dose, right? And this is important in context of ourselves, right? If you don't want scatter reaching us, yes, we can do shielding, yes, we can do time, but actually the best thing to do is just step back. The farther back you step, you significantly decrease the dose reaching you. Now, because this is chapter 11, we added in the concept of maintenance, right? Maintaining intensity. So if I increase my SID, right? And my intensity at the IR is going down. Oh no, but I want a good image. I need to keep my intensity the same. I want to maintain intensity even though I'm changing distance. That brings us to a new equation called direct square law. So do not panic. <laughs> it is exactly the same as inverse square law, but notice the only change here is that these numbers have swapped places. So instead of being inverse, they are now direct, directly across from each other. Doesn't matter which one's on top, which one's on bottom, as long as the top is the same number, the bottom is the same, right? You'll be fine, right? So old, old, new, new. That's automatic. Okay. And so, right, here I replaced intensity with mass. Why? Because if we're trying to fix intensity, which factor do we use? We use mass, right? Not KVP. Don't change KVP. You want to use mass first if you're adjusting the number of x-rays. <coughs> so I increase my distance. Number of x-rays go down. That's fine. I'll just raise my mass to make up for it. Okay, so inverse square law, if you're talking about intensity, number of x-rays reaching the IR. Direct square law, if you're talking about maintaining intensity, keeping the number of x-rays the same. So here, number of x-rays are changing. Here, number of x-rays are staying the same. So yes, earlier our equation for maintenance was KVP and mass. Now it is distance and mass. Mm -hmm. A good observation. We are going to have a lot of these different maintenance equations, and you'll notice that all of them are just some random factor and mass. Why is it always mass? Because when you change the number of x-rays, you want to change mass. Mass increases distance. This is increases mass to increase. Correct. And if distance decreases, mass should decrease. decrease. Perfect. So inverse square law. Oh, we'll just kind of go through this real quick. Hopefully it looks kind of familiar. Right. We want to go from 40 inches to 72. 
So 40 goes in our distance one, 72 goes in our distance two. Mm -hmm. right? So there's our 40, there's our 72. Okay, original exposure was 10 milligrays. What is the new one? Original is number one, so I put that there. Um, number two, I don't know it. There's my unknown, right? Mm -hmm. So from here, if I take this, right, I can simplify, do my squares. 72 squared is 5184. 40 squared is 1600. Okay, so now I have 10, unknown, 5814, 1600. You've seen this before. You just cross multiply. Very good. And once we cross multiply, that would be our answer. Okay, so, old familiar friend. Mm -hmm, that's right, PRE1. This is Millie Gray. Why was the answer centigrade? So, the answer was centigrade. Nope, the answer is Millie Gray. Yeah, right. But it's Millie Gray, it's Millie Gray. Same unit. There is no centigrade anymore. Yay! All right. So, let's go ahead and stop here. When we come back from spring break, we'll pick back up with our secondary factors. Once again, um, for anyone who was not here during break when I said this, you are not required to do your note cards over spring break during that Saturday to Friday week, right? Right. Saturday to Friday, spring break, you don't have to do that. However, if you do, I will use that grade to replace your lowest note card grade. We appreciate you. So if there was a week where you completely forgot to do note cards, right? You missed five days out of the seven. <laughs> And that's really hurting you, right? Just spend spring, spring break, maybe do six of the seven days, get a 100, and that will replace that poor week. Okay? <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Fong. All right, you're welcome. All right. Poor performing week. Good news and bad news. Right. Oh, you love, you love Let's go with bad news. Y'all not switching? No. Oh, is it? Yeah. <laughs>